had the privilege a few months ago of uh, going deep into Indira's world in her home. It's a scary place. And her it? balcony. <laughs> Given my very, you know, formal news broadcasting background, that um, I've, I started growing vegetables on my balcony, how the hell that had happened? And then, I, and I think I told this story to Costa, but it again it illustrates um, how you can be so disconnected by such a fundamental process that happens in our system, but you know, live live the life that we live and, and not even think about it. So I started growing zucchinis, and um, again, didn't even think about what that really meant. And as my flowers started developing, got really excited, and then started getting upset that they weren't t turning into fruit. So, you know, went on to Google and, you know, checked it out, and they said, it said, oh, if you've got a problem with attracting pollinators, you know, it's going to be hard for you to develop fruit. And I went, pollinators? And it said, um, <laughs> like, <laughs> bees, bees. Oh, I've never seen a bee on my balcony. And I always thought that was a good thing because I'd been stung by a bee when I was a kid and slightly <laughs> allergic. So I'd always th thought, as again, as an urban dweller, it was great that there were no bees. I was high enough for there to be no bees. <laughs> and so suddenly now I needed bees to um, pollinate my zucchinis. And I tried the, you know, the paintbrush and you know, moving all the pollen around and all that sort of stuff. And it worked a bit, but it, it was too time consuming. So then my journey began, OK, how do I get bees to come to my balcony? Which my husband obviously thought was hilarious because I'm so paranoid. I'd run if I just saw a bee, a bee way down the street. And I read that bees love, a, you know, obviously they love you know, flowers with great nectar, but they particularly love a flower called borage, which some, most of you would know about. And I'd never heard of it, never grown it, so, you know, put in a few borage seeds and... Um, you know, seeds? Yeah, I grew oh, from seed. Nice. And um, it took a while, obviously, but the borage came up and um, I remember the morning where it looked like the first bud was going to open and I was so excited because I've been waiting a long time for the borage, for the bees, you know, and all <laughs> They're that coming! Stuff. They're coming! <laughs> Um, and it was early sort of sunrise and I had my camera because I write, I'm <laughs> waiting, you know, for the flower to open. And it did. It was beautiful. It is really one of the most beautiful flowers. And, um, you know, just the translucence of, of, of that, those purple petals and the sunlight coming through it. It was just really magical. And then obviously now I'm waiting for the bees and thinking, yeah, and dear, as if a bee's going to go, right, okay. <laughs> Time it's for the bird. I know. So I was sitting there going, this is ridiculous. No bee, no sign of anything. So I went in, had a shower, and came back out to hang my, hang, my, hang my towel out on the balcony. And there was this sort of shadow sort of moving around the borage. And I went, oh, my God. Went in closer. It was a bee. I could not believe it. I was so excited. Believe it. Yeah, exactly. And then I was really terrified because it might sting me. So I ran inside going, oh. <laughs> And then I ran back out again and, and, and encouraging it to go to the flower and <laughs> pick up some pollen, you know. It knew what to do, it didn't need me. It was fine. And this what, what message would you share with people about the importance of getting story out there, whether it be in your 300 millimetre wide balcony that you're now transformed into a book and into speaking circuits and into different groups, like you say, from Parliament House to um, foodies to uh, Wayside Chapel and, and disadvantaged people to, like, mm. how, how important is each individual's power to share stories as you do, as I do, as everyone does? Mm. Oh, hugely. And I think that this is the important thing, is that we are told by various people and various forces that you know, one is not enough and one can't change anything. And that is one thing that, you know, um, as a journalist, you do end up believing that, sadly. And that is one thing when you um, do go out into the community like this and you do something like you write a book and you can see, even if it's just a few people that get it and then start incorporating it into their life in a small way. And as I say, you don't have to go all over the you know, top the way I did with, you know, 43 herbs and vegetables. If you just grow one pot of herbs, just that process, what you are doing is understanding what it is to taste something fresh other than something that you know is a couple of weeks old. You are just picking what you need so you're not wasting food. And because you're only picking what you need, it's not going into you know the bin, into landfill and causing another environmental problem. So even that process from one pot of herbs sitting on a windowsill, I think is you know an important way to show people that it 
start small. Start small and make changes small in your world, your life. You know, it's really important to do that.